With the Fisheye Marine Park underwater observatory planted in the middle of a preserve, it's easy to see how the Petey Bomb Halls receives more human interaction compared to other marine preserves on Guam. But before I head out into the water, I take time to get suited up. So we're all geared up and ready to check what's going on under the sea. Um. Josh, you don't need all this gear, man. All you need is a snorkel. So with just my snorkel gear, I make my way into the Petey Bomb Halls, accompanied by Department of Agriculture biologist Brent Tibbetts and Tammy Anderson, formerly of the Guam Environmental Protection Agency, and of course, my cameraman Charles. At first glance, the bomb holes appears to be deeper than other preserves, which Tibbetts says is one of the things that makes this area so unique. The bomb holes themselves are a pretty unique geologic feature for Guam. These are the best developed uh, bomb hole type habitat anywhere on Guam. Also this has some of the largest patches of soft coral that you find anywhere on Guam. Soft coral uh, is important habitat for certain kinds of fish and animals and if you can save its home you, you preserve and you'll have more of those type of animals resulting from that. Tibbetts also says fish are artificially bigger in this area because of an abundance of food provided by the vendors that use the preserve on a daily basis. And although there are clownfish nestling themselves in beds of soft coral, and a weird marine worm flowing with the ocean current, that wasn't all we encountered. We saw several different kinds of uh, skipjacks, uh, wrasses, several different kinds of damselfish in big numbers of them, uh, goatfish, some of the things that you don't see on the reef flats usually, they'll come into the bomb hole, which is a pretty deep habitat for to find on a reef flat area. He adds that seasonal fishing is allowed in Petey and says as the population grows, fish move outside the preserved boundaries where they can be caught, creating a spillover effect. But not just the fish population seems to be thriving. Different types of hard coral like parietes and staghorn, as well as soft coral like cinellaria, are just as plentiful. However, we also found pockets along the seascape full of dead coral, a concern Tibbet says needs to be addressed. Another reason why marine preserves are strictly enforced is because of coral preservation. We found this piece of coral already broken off in the preserve, and with me is the Department of Agriculture biologist Brent Tibbets. Brent, how long does this coral take to grow back? Well, coral is very slow growing. It, it, tough to say for sure, but a piece like this would be realistic to maybe guess 40 or 50 years for something like this to, to regrow again. By the way, we placed that piece of dead coral back where we found it in the preserve, especially since there are laws against taking pieces of it out of the ocean. Dead coral isn't the only issue though. There are concerns of too much human exposure occurring in the bomb holes. But Tibbetts says some studies will be done in the future. Uh, there are some studies that have been done elsewhere in the world and we're probably going to be doing something similar to monitor how much activity can this preserve sustain before it starts to become negatively impacted. Uh, the number of users or the frequency of use or the, the location of the use are all things that will be looked at. Despite the challenges ahead, Tibbetts says the PD Preserve seems to continue to do its job in protecting and allowing the fish and coral populations to grow. So what are you waiting for? Grab some snorkel gear and check out what's going on beneath Guam's shores. And don't forget to put on some sunblock. Josh Takenko, Pacific News Center.